So we've been on safari for 10 days now and we've been doing what we call a mobile safari. Now, to understand a mobile safari, you need to actually understand where the origin of the word safari comes from. It's an old Kiswahili word that means to journey. The type of safari that we've been doing, this mobile safari, is, is to me it is really defining that word, uh, taking a journey. Because what you are basically is you're a group of people, sometimes people that know each other, sometimes people that don't know each other. You come together, um, you have one guide, and you have a small team of staff that are setting up the mobile camp for you and looking after you. And you spend 10 days together on this journey, and it's only the, you know, the small group of people always together. So you become a bit of a family um, you know, over the course of your, of your trip. You experience many different things together and uh, you start to form some bonds. So it's a very special, uh, very, very special type of safari, a very special way of doing uh, this wonderful thing called safari. So basically how it works, there'll be two vehicles. One vehicle we call a backup vehicle and in this vehicle the entire camp must fit together with a team of three staff, one chef, one for general camp uh, hand and one as bar and waiter food service. They set up uh, the entire camp, beautiful guest tents, ensuite bathrooms, small tent for the, for the kitchen, small tent for the dining. And then later on, the game drive vehicle with the guide and the guests, we arrive at the camp and it's, it looks beautiful, it's set up. Somehow in this small, very basic kitchen, the guys managed to cook three course meals, really fantastic desserts, fantastic baking. You can get quite fat on the, on the safari. Um, so this is how it works. And usually you will spend about three days or three nights in a different area. And of course, then you will be driving between the different areas, not flying. So this allows you to, yeah, to really experience the entire landscape all the way through, traveling from place to place spending some in-depth time in the place, learning the place and the area, and then going to another place to experience that. We have no fixed times, there's no uh, structure that we have to follow. You know, if we find a, a beautiful sighting, maybe a leopard, like the one we saw earlier, and it seems like she's getting a bit more active during the later morning, we don't have to go back to camp for brunch time, or there's no, nothing restricting us. We can stay with the leopard the whole day if we like.
My name is Robson. I'm a son of a Bushman tribe. Uh, my parents are Bushmen from two different dialects. My dad is Robson Mashabe, my mom is Kibaredi to Robson. Myself and my wife, we have inherited uh, the knowledge that, that we have today that we're sharing with the guests internationally and locally. Uh, we're both professional guides and I'm working on a mobile safari. Mangota is the village where I was born, which is on the edge, northeastern side edge of the Makhari Khadi. And I've been guiding for 18 years. We're in Savuti, um, on the northern end of the Savuti Marsh. Savuti Marsh is out that way, Toby is back that way. And we're on one of the higher points um, in Botswana. Botswana doesn't have much elevation, so it's a very, very, very flat country. So unique here to see rock. We don't see much rock in Botswana and to have a, a viewpoint is, uh, is fantastic. So here in Savuti, there's a small group of hills. Currently we're on a hill called uh, the Bushman Paintings Hill. And the reason it's called the Bushman Painting Hill is because you can see just over there we have some, uh, a couple of Bushman paintings. So there's one small panel there. Um, there's another small panel a little bit higher up. Not very many paintings, but it shows, of course, that they were here. These paintings are, are dated back one to 2,000 years old. Um, and generally very classic here um, in terms of Bushman paintings. They depict the animals that the Bushmen have a close relationship with, in particular those that they hunt. So over here you can see an eland on the top, which is a very, very large antelope. You can see an elephant underneath, and then we can see a, a sable underneath that. So, um, yeah, a beautiful indication of, uh, of the Bushmen and to show that this was a very, uh, spiritually, a very important um, area for them. <laughs> Lunch is ready? Lunch is ready already. adjust your exposure compensation too much okay. because you're going to be shooting stuff that's on the water um, or in the reeds like that.
So I grew up here in the uh, in the Okavango Delta. I consider myself a very lucky person. My parents were camp managers. They managed uh, small lodges um, from the 80s into the 90s. And so when I was born, uh, the first five years of my life we spent living in the bush in the Okavango. From my childhood, um, there's a particular area that, that I suppose it just holds some, some beautiful memories for me, some of my first memories in fact. Um, I think I lived there when I was about five and the place is called Gugana and it's up in the northern uh, areas of the, of the Okavango Delta. When I was young there I had a small crocodile, that it got injured and somehow it fell to me and I sort of helped to raise it and it was, it was a wild crocodile but it used to come quite close. His name was Blackie, I will never forget him. <laughs> Uh, we also had, which probably in today's world would be a, a big health and safety hazard, but in the early 90s it wasn't a problem. We had a, a floating pontoon, so four wooden decks and a big cage that just was sunken underneath the water. So that was the swimming pool and it would float out around the lagoon in amongst the crocodiles and the hippos and everything. And uh, that's where I learned to swim. So for me, the Okavango Delta um, you know, it ho holds a very, very important part in my in my heart. I'll never, ever, um, you know, forget it. It will always remain a, an integral part of who I am. It is the most incredible ecosystem uh, in the world. It's a large swamp within a big desert area. Um, it is incredibly diverse. There's one of the largest diversities of wildlife, birds, fish, amphibians, everything um, in the world. Um, and of course it is exceptionally beautiful. Um, lots of beautiful waterways winding around. I suppose having come from this as, a, you know, as my home, it was only natural that it would be an environment that I would want to live and work in in the future. So when, when your, the, your passion and your, your, um, your love becomes your work, I think you're, uh, you're in a very good position in life. called Chiefs Island in particular in the center of the, the Okavango was an area that was designated for hunting for the royal family only. So that's why when it became a national park um, it was named after that royal family, uh, the Moremi family. So Chief Moremi and now we have uh, the Moremi Game Reserve. Um, so there are various different areas in the Game Reserve and uh, this is one of the more, yeah, more prominent ones. Fantastic game viewing here, very good lion leopards a lot of leopard um, good possibility for wild dogs maybe a little bit more difficult for cheetah as it's quite wet um, the area 
Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic area to, uh, to be game driving in. Reds and I'm more south east. Capilla uh, Larona, so I can your reds and meet more south east. So the soul of Botswana is to me evident in two places. The first and the, probably to me the most, uh, most valuable is the natural environment. We are in a country that has uh, some very, very different environments, a very small population, a large area. And so most of this country, the, the huge majority of this country is, is given to the wild animals and to the wild area. And that's something that is not very common in today's world. Uh, it's a very, very unique point about Botswana and something that I think makes it, makes it unique, makes it special. Um, and the fact that we live so close with, the, with wildlife, you know, on, on, a, on any morning if I want to go for a run, I can't wear earphones because I need to be on the lookout for elephant. So that's something that's very, very um, incredible to me and, is, and forms a big part of the soul, a part of what Botswana is all about close proximity to to wildlife of course there's another side of the story and that is the human element the people of Botswana are fantastic they are a very quiet very calm people we've never fought any wars we've never had any civil war any civil strife of any sort we're a very peaceful nation I mean the essence of peace is is Botswana we would rather instead of fighting about something we'd rather sit down under a tree take two days, talk about it, um, and come to a solution. So, yeah, I think the essence of Botswana and what, what Botswana's soul is all about is about its wildlife and about its people and about how the two of them live together.
shaking. <laughs> Keep shaking. Huh? Hey, Robson, the leopard is waiting. Oh, so yeah. Okay, guys, let's go. Keep by her. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get on so far. Can we try to take a picture on the camera with the light? Yeah, for sure. You're welcome to. I mean, you'll get a, you'll get a, a, a photograph of them, for sure. The advantage is, is hyenas are just listening to the... Look, look, he's the, ba the baby is raising the left, and he's shaking as well. It's a, actually a sub adult, it's not a big one. What kind of settings should we? Um, just use your so exposure compass zero, shutter speed, maybe just go one, two, five, um, zero. I think maybe I understand what you're talking understand. about. For us, we're below the equator. If you check the water, when you pour the water, it goes this way, right? Yeah. 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 What happens back home? The other way around. Yeah. Okay, now and for us, when the moon is coming yeah. up, is this? Yeah. But when it's dying that side, yeah. You'll probably see it not like uh, this, but that yeah, way. Yeah. This is one of the best campsites, guys. This is such a nice place. And has the sunbrille now? That's good. Ah, can I let my baby one? Let us face up the mama, you mock. I have it is all the stories that we hear that the rhino is going to put down the fire, so you think that is still happening. <laughs> <laughs> So good to eat him a little. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Are we able to see a leopard in the Mokoro, maybe? Uh, no, if you look very closely in these trees. Yes. Possible. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So the soul of Botswana is, to me, all, almost, sorry, let me start that again. Mm -hmm. um, okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Two, one, right. jump. Uh-huh. Okay. We going high, guys, or is it Yeah, high. Yeah? Oh, high. However high not, you want to go. Not too high, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we go three, two, one, and then jump. Okay, ready? 